Pastor Buddy and Sister Ann Wimberly from Lanny Road Baptist Church. We're welcoming you to our online broadcast. We're a fundamental King James Bible believing church that loves Jesus Christ and one another. We're located at 5998 Lanny Road on the extreme north side of Jacksonville, but we would love to have you visit one of our services in person. Our regular services are 11 a.m. on Sunday and 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so now, let's go join one of our live services that's already in progress.
morning to everybody. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. As you are aware, we uh, went back to the mask uh, to get you to your seats. Um, uh, because of all the um, increase in numbers and the closeness uh, that uh, the, the coronavirus seems to be encroaching upon us. And so um, I appreciate your cooperation. I know that some folks are staunch against that kind of thing, and, and you may be also, and I'm, I just appreciate you being willing to put it on for 15 seconds to walk to your seat. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for complying with us and helping us to be able to do all that we think that we need to do uh, to be able to keep everyone safe. One of the things that transpired was a member of um, Greg Abel's Baptist Church contracted the virus. And uh, so they had to shut down. They're starting all over again. And not to, not to even mention, I don't even know about the condition of this individual, their age or their health and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, if I was in that pastor's shoes, I don't know how I'd be feeling today if, if it was one of you. So I don't want to have to go through that. So if we can take a small measure that might help minimize, so some of you may think it doesn't, but if it does, if we can take a small measure, it doesn't hurt you. It won't hurt you. It won't cost you a thing. And um, if we can do that small measure, and I appreciate you being willing to take that small measure with us. Um, I'd like to ask you to stand. We're going to open with a word of prayer. I want to say thank you for being here today, and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers who are in attendance, those that will be watching over Facebook. It's so good to be able to celebrate the institution of fatherhood, and we'll be sharing a little more about that as the day goes on. Uh, but let me lead you in a word of prayer as we come together to worship today most of all. Father, we thank you for the glorious privilege of being in the house of God. I ask now, Lord, for your blessings upon us as we get ready to go into worship. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be right. Don't let us ever think that worship starts with the first song or the first prayer. Lord, worship starts when our heart turns toward God. When we begin to look upward in our spirit, and Lord, we yield ourselves to the will of our Father, and we say, God, we've come here to adore you and to praise you and to lift you up. Lord, that's when worship begins. So I pray that it'll start in our hearts right now, that our spirits, Lord, would be um, melted and mended to, into one as we lift our praise up together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, if you would, remain standing. Take your psalm book, turn over to page 362. That's G. We're going to sing, I'll fly away. Page 362, G. <laughs> some glad morning when this life is
Lord, we just want to thank you. We don't want to tell you, Lord, how much we love you. We want to tell you, dear God, that uh, we just appreciate being in your house. Yes, we do. We thank you for that. I know, Lord, there's a lot of things going on. Right. Lord, we need your touch. We just need your touch, Lord. We need you to do away with that virus. Yep. Lord, we need you to uh, swell all the disturbances that are happening. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Protect. Lord, be, be with all the police in the That's right. Yes, yes protect them, God. Us. Lord, that uh, people with these children become... Yes, them. protect them, Lord. Lord, just be with us. Again, Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. In your house. We ask the Lord to continue to be with the phone service. Yep. So for this each and every phone up, Lord, I know there's a sermon in every phone. Yes. So we thank you for that. Yes. Yeah. Lord, to be with Brother Buddy as he brings the message. Help coming. us here. Amen. I pray, Lord, that uh, Brother Buddy steps aside, and Lord, you just speak to us. Yes. Lord, Lord we'll yes. give you. We'll give you Lord, the praise and glory that you deserve. And Lord, the things that we do need to glorify you. Amen. All right, y'all may be seated. Take your son. that knows that God's delivered you like Brother oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, He lifted me up out of a pit, out of a horrible pit. Oh, the yes. psalmist said, and he put my feet on a solid rock yep. and established my doors. Amen. I was following after my own desire, yep. and my own lust, and my own will, and my own life, and it was taking me straight down the sure road of was. destruction. I thank God mm. for the day that he reached further down than my hands could reach up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I appreciate that. That's why we come. We come to give him praise because of all he's done. Remember the ten lepers and only one come back to give him praise. That represents the church, the true believers, washed in the blood, the ones that truly know that they have been forgiven and, and they have their sin that paid in full. That's us. We come back to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. I'm sorry, Barry. Go right ahead. <laughs> Take your songbook. Turn over to page 155. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his wretched blood atoning Then I 
right. Well, I was carrying him down for a few days, so I said, Lord, restore and immediately. Amen. 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 Yes, he will. Yeah. Yep. Yep.
God. Amen. It's all been washed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome. Happy Father's Day to you again as we uh, got a couple songs for you this morning. Uh, the first one that we want to share with you is, uh, is a song that uh, reminds us of the bond. Uh, that uh, fathers and sons uh, share uh, the heritage that is passed down from generation to generation. As I think about my dear father who's now gone on to be with the Lord, I was just sharing with somebody out of the community yesterday, I believe it was, he come by and he was talking, he said, I don't remember you, who are you? And I told him, I'm buddy, he said, I remember our Mr. Wimberly. I said, that would be my daddy. My daddy will always be Mr. Wimberly. <laughs> And um, as we were talking, he said, I liked him. I said, I appreciate that. Uh, but l quite honestly, for you guys today, I want you to know that um, I knew him uh, outside of uh, my mom. I knew him better than anybody here. He was my father. And um, although my dad uh, was not a perfect man, my dad had his flaws, his um, own shortcomings, I know him to be a man that loved the Lord with all of his heart, lived uh, a way before me that left a path that I can only hope to be able to walk as he did. And every day, that's my prayer to God. Lord, just let me, let me please you by following after you. And so... Uh, we're going to sing for you this morning. It's a song called Like Father, Like Son.
wore my blue jeans and I wore a tie. Is this thing on? Turn this up a little bit. There we go. It's on now. This is uh, A flat, guys. Y'all ain't never played it. Neither have I. When a single mom goes out on a date with somebody new. It always winds up feeling more like a job interview. My mama used to wonder if she'd ever meet someone who couldn't find out about me and then turn around and run. I met the man I called my dad when I was five years old. He took my mom out to a movie I got to go a few months later I remember lying there in bed I overheard him pop the question I prayed that she'd say yes all of a sudden oh it seemed so strange to me how we went from something's missing to a family looking back all I can say about all the things he did for me I hope I'm at least half the dad he didn't have to be I met the girl who's now my wife about three years ago we had the perfect marriage but we wanted something more 
Here I stand surrounded by our family and friends crowded around the nursery window as they bring the baby in. All of a sudden, oh, it seems so strange to me how we've gone from something's missing to a family. Looking through the glass, I think about the man who's standing next to me. I hope I'm at least half the day he didn't have to be. I hope I'm at least half the day he didn't have to be. Yeah, he didn't have to be. Someone that attends our church or has attended our church somewhat regularly about a month ago called and asked me, said, uh, what relationship is Rick to you? And I said, he's my son. And she said, that's what I said. She said, but my husband said that there ain't no way. Uh, you ain't old enough. So uh, I didn't I didn't say anything, and I, I, I actually I did I said thank you for that. But um, she went on talking for a little while, and obviously she I could tell she was still fishing around. And I don't say this all the time because it's not pertinent. But I told her later on I said well I said since you obviously are trying to figure this out, let me tell you. I can hear her doing the math, you know. I said, uh, Rick and Sharon uh, were, um, <laughs> Rick, and Sh Rick and Sharon was uh, part of the package whenever I married Ann. I, uh, I married Ann and I had uh, a son and a daughter uh, immediately, I said. So uh, Rick was just, a, just barely walking good and Sharon was just started preschool, I think, and or was about to, and and, um, and I had the great privilege of being able to adopt them. Amen. And uh, I, we, I don't ever think about there not being blood there. Right. I, I really don't. Um, blood. Yeah. And um, I think it come to light one time, not just a couple of years ago, maybe when my granddaughter found out, Abby, found out that I wasn't blood grandpa. And she said, that's impossible. How can that be? I've got his teeth. <laughs> Am I right? See? You know, and I, 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 I tell her the same thing. You're right, baby. Um, and uh, so that song that Rick pulled out sometime late last night and worked on most of the evening, apparently, um, is, a, is a reminder to me, Sharon, that I chose this wonderful life 40 years ago with your mom and with y'all. It was fully understood up front, and um, I'm, I'm grateful uh, that I've been able to be a dad for 40 years thus far and now a grandfather. 
And um, I pray as long as God gives me breath that I walk in that light. Some of you may have a similar story. I know that we could all tell it, and this one's mine. <clears throat> but it just, uh, it's been a, a glorious trip that I promise you, with my hand up to an almighty God, I wouldn't trade for all the gold in Fort Knox. Amen. I promise you, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't even consider it for a moment. I, I love what God has given me in my life. It's my life. And it's been a real blessing, and I couldn't ask for it to be any better. This morning, I want to ask for you to be in prayer for Miss Charlene Chase's um, uh, aunt, Kizzy Crawford. She had a massive stroke in Georgia and not expected to make it. So y'all remember Aunt Kizzy. Also remember Sister LaVon Waters, who is still in Baptist Hospital. Um, the last we heard was a possible enlarged heart, a nodule on her thyroid. Uh, she's had some pain in her chest. She fell not re just recently, Brother Terry was reminding me, and, and she bruised her ribs a little bit, I think, and hit her head, I think, on the tile floor. So um, y'all remember her in prayer, and also uh, Terry's dad, because now um, he's there, and, and Terry was telling me this morning that dad every few minutes says, where's your mama? And you can tell him, but he won't remember, but just a little while. Yeah. Y'all remember Terry and his family in prayer <laughs> as they had to carry that. <clears throat> um, let's remember to pray for Greg Abel's Baptist Church and all those folks associated with that situation I told you guys about. Um, and Brother Mike Bailey is uh, reminding us to pray for this COVID to go away one day. <laughs> and... Um, and uh, pray that God would protect all the fathers that are in our armed forces and at home in our police force and on the front lines protecting our country and our liberties. Uh, there's fathers out there. They've got children at home or maybe they got grown children, so they got grandkids. Y'all remember them in prayer. Our uh, praise report today is uh, Miss Martha O'Neill says uh, her hip surgery went very well, was very successful. She wants to thank God for that. And Miss Betty Beck said uh, she was grateful for the Spirit of God that's moving this morning in the house of God and dealing with a lot of broken hearts and a lot of issues of life that only God can do. And I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Brother Robert, you had something else you wanted to share. He's a lucky boy. <laughs> oh, God always, God's always got a plan, my brother. It doesn't he do that? Brother Walter. How about that? And you thank God for it. Hallelujah. That's what we do when God does something, we thank Him. Amen? He's our Father. That's awesome. Amen. Uh, before I get to the message this morning, somebody else want to share something quickly. You may be something burning on your heart. You just feel like, you, man, if I had a chance, I'd love to say it. Brother Terry, hold on just a second, brother. Yeah. But I want to Certainly will, my friend. Brother Dave? I just want to thank God for Sunday school this morning. Was that good? Oh, man. It was wonderful. Amen. Great Hallelujah. God's word came busting out. You. Wonderful. It was, it was, great. Uh, was, was it good in there, Dan? Was it good having everybody with you again? Sister Billy? Worked out well? All right. Very good. So glad to hear that. Wonderful. It'll get back. It'll get back. We just have to be patient. We have to 
and go down a certain path, and that's awesome. You know when you go down the path, listen for a second, I'll get to the message. When you go down a certain path, you have to remember who knows the steps that you're walking. Amen. Amen. And you may, you, you may think, I, this is ridiculous, I don't want to have to do this, I don't want to have to go this way, but God knows what's best. And God knows what you, what you need to experience. And so uh, just try to relax as uh, the Greyhound commercial used to be. Leave the driving to us. <laughs> Let God do what He needs to do. Amen. And uh, just relax and take, and take that journey. And you'll be surprised at what God will do as He takes you that way. We're going to the book of Matthew chapter number 7. Uh, we'll be beginning in verse number 7 this morning as we talk about a good father. A good father. I was uh, sharing with uh, Brother Wade this morning, I believe it was, as he was telling me about some uh, sermons that he had heard on fatherhood and how they had really just uh, been um, stepping on toes and, and, and giving him a rip. And I said, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like every Father's Day that's what I kind of do, kind of try to beat on the dads a little bit and bring them into life. But I'm, I'm not doing that today. I don't think I am anyway. Uh, I think I want to talk to you about the attributes of a good father. And uh, this is going to be uh, with the, the best example that I can imagine, starting in Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 7, or if you're all there with me. It says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you? That could have said what father. What man is there of you whom if his son ask bread will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish will give him a serpent. Verse 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, hold on, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things, notice the last four or five words here, to them that ask him. Amen. Right? Amen. What's the condition? Ask. I don't know if you've ever noticed before, but in verse number 7 it has ask, um, seek, and knock. If you do an acronym, if you take the first letter from each one of those, ask, seek, and knock, you get the word ask again. Uh, the idea of, of the um, Communication, the, uh, the, the relationship that exists between father and son. Let me stop here for just a second before I get into the verses themselves and explain to you that this is on the premise. These verses are on the presupposed idea that you have a relationship with your father. Okay? Uh, if you're going to ask and seek and knock and he's going to give... It's, it's going off the, the, the premise that already you are in relationship with your father. And if you are in relationship and in fellowship with your father and you ask him, what man is there on this earth that wouldn't turn and give to his child anything that he asked? That's why I don't want Rick talking to me today. <laughs> After what he's done today, I don't want him because if he asked me for anything, he'd get it. I don't want him asking. Don't talk to me today. <laughs> Tomorrow I could say no. Today I couldn't say nothing. But so, but what? What in the relationship and in the fellowship? Whenever, whenever your hearts are mended as one, when there's the the loving fellowship between a a, a, a parent and a child. Let's say the father and the child. Uh, then there is the understood. That whatever you ask for, you shall receive it. Amen. Wow. Can I, well, like I said, I'm not to the scriptures yet. I'm still, I'm giving 
preview. My, my father, my father was an amazing man. We, we, I, he was known as what we call a horse trader. I don't know ever bought and sold one horse. But that was what he was known as a horse trader. There was nothing, if, it, if there was a horse for sale or a horse to sell, he would do it. But it was buy and sell. That's what my dad loved. He just enjoyed it. Dad wasn't uh, materialistic in the fact that he was trying to accumulate a lot of stuff because most of the stuff he bought I thought was junk. <laughs> so it wasn't materialism. My dad just loved the thrill of the process of negotiating and purchasing and selling. That's what it, that was part of it. It didn't matter what it was. He loved to do it. And our kid, my, my kids and my grandkids, the grandkids, the kids know this for a fact that when Grandpa was ready to do a deal, if he had his hand in his pocket, he was jingling like this. Or if his hand was outside, you'd see his fingers like he was counting money already. Uh, it, it just it got all over him. He was he was so enthralled in that, and and he and he accumulated some stuff. My dad come from a very poor background. He was uh, one of twelve children. Uh, he never knew his father. He was brought up um, uh, without uh, the privilege of that, and um, pretty much his his uh, brothers and his uh, his uncles. Uh, I think kind of snatched him up and, and brought him into uh, the reality of this world. Took him to places he shouldn't go. My dad told me when he was a young man, when he was 12 and 13 years old, he was experiencing things that a grown man shouldn't experience uh, because that's just where he found himself. And, and he said, I remember him telling me that when uh, he found out that they were going to have me, he said that he remembered that he fell on his knees and he said, God, I don't know how to be a daddy Never had one. I don't know how to be a daddy. I want to be a good daddy, though. So his idea was to, um, to live his life devoted to his family. And he did that. We read these verses, and we see where Jesus is talking about his father. I'm just talking about an earthly man, a man that had faults and failures and his, and, and different ambition. But Jesus is talking about his heavenly father without fault and without failure. And he says, if you ask, it shall be given to you. It's an amazing thing. So I remember not long before my dad, uh, my dad knew he was, he was getting sickly. And uh, I remember him <laughs> walking me out to his old garage one time. And he told me, he said, son, one day this whole empire is going to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> the whole empire. Uh, you don't know what that did for me. I looked around and just saw all the stuff. <laughs> so dad called us all up one day, all the boys. He called Brad and Rick and myself. You guys remember, I'm sure. And he told us, he said, I want you all to come down into the garage and get whatever it is you want. He said, because I'm going to have a yard sale. And um, we may have picked one thing a piece, and we told him we don't want anything you got. You know, go ahead and sell whatever you want to sell, and it's yours. You know, do whatever you want to with it, but... My daddy just had a bunch of stuff. To him, it was treasures. Well, like I said, he had an empire. But the thing that always impressed me was he always told me, son, if I've got it, you've got it. If I've got it, you've got it. If there's anything you ever need and I got it, you got it. And if I don't have it, I'll try to get it. So Jesus is talking about his heavenly father. This is an earthly father I'm talking about that has the passion to want to do everything for his child, to be um, able to supply all of the needs and the desires in the life of his only son. And here Jesus is saying, look, if you have an earthly father that a child or a son would ask for bread, you wouldn't give him a stone. Or if he asked for a fish, which might be a little more uh, extravagant in that day, and not just the necessity of bread, but, I mean, we're talking about some fish, man. We're talking seafood. Who don't want that? And he's, he asked for fish, you wouldn't give him a snake. And if you, being evil, sinful, uh, un unperfected, corrupted, self-willed individuals, if you 
can give good gifts to your children, this is the question. How much more? That's a great question. I don't want to get past that phrase right there. Jesus said, if you can ask of your earthly fallible father and he will give you good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father, the good father, the sinless father, how much more will he give you good things, good gifts? That's the question. How much more? How far above what we've experienced is the experience of the gift that the Father wants to give us? All right, now let me get to my notes quickly. He said, uh, ask, seek, and knock. I took ask and I extrapolated it out. It's, I, asking is to pray, and this all centers around prayer, of course. Uh, and prayer is not just asking God for stuff. Did you know that already? Prayer is communion with God, right? If my son only came over to ask me for stuff, we'd have a whole different relationship. But if my, if my daughter only showed up when she needed something, there'd be a whole different dynamic going on. But prayer is, um, is a communion. It's a, it's a conversation. It's a, a sharing of lives and, and hearts. And so when you pray, you're not only speaking to God, you're hearing. You're hearing from God. You're being moved and filled and blessed by God. There's, a, 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 there's a, a, an intercourse taking place. And, and so um, when we talk about prayers, ask means that you pray, and you in praying we talk about inquiring of God. God, would you do this? Or Lord, would you bless with that? Or Lord, could you give this? Or, or bless in this area? Seeking. Seeking means to pray often. Uh, instead of just one and done. Uh, it means that you are um, uh, going and being uh, consistent with the communion. You, you're, it's a regular thing for you. It's not a surprise to the Lord whenever. So if you're seeking for something, it goes beyond just asking. You can pray and ask, but if you're going to be um, uh, seeking for something, then you're going to be praying often, which means you're searching for that thing. All right, God, I ask you, and I've asked you again, and I've asked you, and I'm looking. I'm, I'm on the lookout. I'm watching to see the delivery. I'm in expectation. When I ask, I believe God's going to deliver because he said, if you ask, you shall. That's right. So I'm, I'm doing it repetitively, and I'm, I'm not because I have to remind him, but because of the good communion that comes with that, it helps me to stay in line with his heart. So we have this communion going on. So you pray, you ask, or you inquire, uh, you seek, and it means you're searching or you're praying often, or you're knocking. The knocking means that you've gone another step. You've not only uh, asked and been searching and, and, and praying often, but now you pray with a passion. There is an, an urgency there is an, uh, uh, a fire that is built up in your bones. You are persistent. Now, there is, there's, a, there's an urgent need in you that God would move on your behalf. You're pressing. Man, you are pressing. Man, I, I, if, if I said to my father, Dad, would you do this for me, it might, I, I might would receive it right away, and, and maybe not. If I went back to him a few times, I may would get it. I may would find it. But if I went to him passionately, and I besought him, and I, and I gave urgency to the situation, Dad would stop whatever he was doing. And that situation would be handled right then. There's something pressing, and I need, and so the Bible says that if we ask, we seek, and we knock. It said, if you ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And it goes on in verse 8, and it says, everyone, I don't know if you caught that or not, everyone that asks receives, everyone that, uh, that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. And, and so uh, we're not talking about three separate things. 
We're not talking about asking is separate from praying or, or seeking or knocking is separate from asking or seeking. We're talking about it's progressive. If you pray, I'm so grateful for you. Maybe you pray every time you go to eat your meal. Maybe you pray just before you go to bed at night. Maybe you could consider that if you want to seek God, you might even pray more than that. Right? And then if you have something that's really urgent on your heart, maybe you've got a wayward child. Maybe you have something that is going wrong in the family, or there's something that's just passionately burning in your soul, and you need to knock. The urgency then uh, sets into place, and you, you come in before the Lord, and you pull up your chair and sit down, like, I'm not going nowhere till you bless me. It's the, it's the sense of persistency, not separate. It is a progressive work. The expectancy of the child in these particular verses is that they are to receive what has been asked for, sought after, or persisted after. Um, and our earthly fathers know how to reward such determination and expectation, like I just described to you. Our earthly fathers understand that. I, as a father, understand that. I know if, it's, if it means that much to them, then I need to stop what I'm doing and address it. Okay? So if I know that, what do you think? How much more in verse 11? <laughs> if ye be an evil know how, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven get good things? So uh, therefore, our heavenly Father will also, um, um, to many degrees above uh, what we see out of our earthly fathers, to many degrees above that, so many that you can't count them, our heavenly Father is more willing to do than our earthly Father is. Before I get too far, let me stop for a second. One of the problems and the reason you don't receive is because we don't ask. The book of James tells us that. I don't know if you guys have been there or not, right? The book of James says you, 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 don't, you, you don't receive because you don't ask. You receive not because you ask not. Oh, and, and then when you do ask, you ask out of self-centered motivations that you might consume it upon your own lust. Yep. These verses are teaching us that through a passionate relationship of communion with the Holy God, there's nothing you can't receive. Now, before I get any further, don't, you don't want to raise your hands outside, but on the inside, on your, on, in your soul. Is there anything that you're passionate about today that you want God to do? You can raise that inward hand. Just think about that, right? Is there anything at all that you want, that you would love to camp right in front of the throne of God and persist to inflame God towards dropping everything and turn and pay attention and move on your behalf? Is there anything? Of course there is. Why haven't you received it? Is it his fault? We think, I think we see the issue here. The child becomes wayward in the breakdown of the relationship and the communication. Jesus speaking to us doesn't say, hey, hang on. The father wants to, to talk with you guys. There's some things he wants to share with you. What he does is just the opposite. He says to them, y'all hold on a second. The heavenly father is always available to you. In fact, at the tomb of Lazarus, when Jesus began to pray, he told his father, I know that you always hear me. Right? If he always hears Jesus' request and prayer, he always hears yours. So the problem is, is that you haven't been praying as you should. Probably one of the weakest areas in the life of a believer is his prayer life. It really is. You get tied up in the things of the world and you think you just don't have time for that. When was the last time you spent more than five minutes in a prayer, or, or it may be 30 seconds in a, Lord bless this food, and, uh, and, and that's all you really do. Or somebody asks you for prayer, and you, you, you give a, 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 maybe a 60-second oration, and, and you think that you've done something. Yeah, I prayed, brother. When was the last time you stopped and spent quality time in communion with God? 
That's a, that's a powerful. Jesus went away into the mountain. He spent 40 days and 40 nights in communion with the Father. He was always slipping away somewhere. He was either in the garden or up in a mountain somewhere. He was always spending time with the Father. Always. So that that communion would be tight. So that whenever he would ask, he would receive. When he would seek, he would find, and when he would knock, it would be opened unto him. He's a good father. I want to introduce you today. I, I want to speak as one of the brothers, you, one of your brothers. He's our father, but you may not have known him very intimately or very personally. And I want to tell you today, he's a good father. You don't have anything to fear of him. He's a good, good father. His desires is to give blessings. In fact, in the book of James, uh, chapter 1, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and, and cometh down from the Father of lights, uh, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good thing we get comes from Him. And God is always dumping blessings into our lives. God is constantly being a good Father. The question has, have we been good children? He's a good father, and he loves to give good gifts to his children. He's waiting to bless you. I didn't know if you knew this or not. I thought I'd send you away today with a different expectation. He's wanting, he's waiting right now to bless you. That thing I asked you to raise your hand about a while ago, that thing that's blistering in your soul right now, that you would love more than anything you're about willing to sell anything you have, give anything you have to get the answer to that one prayer. And listen, have you asked him? Have you been persistent? Have you been knocking? Have you been seeking? Are you, are you camping before the Lord and, and inflamed and impassioned over your commitment? To share with the Lord. He's waiting to give. He's wait. Can you imagine the creator of this universe, the God that owns everything, is on the edge waiting, saying, Come on, spill it. Get to it. Come to me. Come to me. Come. And we go, like, <laughs> What is the deal? We don't know him as the good father. Most folks believe that he's an old man sitting on the edge of a throne with a bunch of lightning bolts in his hand waiting to crown you if you step out of line somehow. You want to do that again? You know, smoked him. <laughs> That's what they believe about God. That God, you know, God don't like that. He's going to send you to blah, blah, blah. You know? And we, we, we seem to think that God's, God's a daily routine is to sit there and watch over the blubbers that everybody makes and to put his thumb on us and squish us down into the mud. It's just the opposite. He's a good father. He's, he's waiting to see when you stumble and fall with your face into that mud to reach out that ever loving hand and to lift you up. As Brother TJ said, as my testimony goes, you may find at the bottom of that place, that pit you fell into, you may find he's the only one that he's the only one that's reaching out a hand to you. You may feel like you, everybody else has, has forsaken you and forgotten you, but not him. Why? Because he's a good, good father. He loves. And there's earthly fathers on this earth that have stood behind their children through difficult situations, and they've been good fathers. But if earthly men can do that, how much more can our heavenly father, amen, fulfill the role of a good, good father? Now, if you, I'm trying to close, if you are a child of, of his, then what I'm trying to get you to do and I'm really, I'm, I'm working on this pretty hard today. I keep pounding the same things. You may recognize that. If you're a child of His, then I'm trying to get you to embrace the grace. I'm trying to get you to embrace the grace which He desires to bless you with. In other words, I'm trying to get you to see and to receive and to acknowledge and to operate 
in the arena of understanding that he is a good father, a good, good father that is looking to pour out blessings on you. He's just waiting. He's waiting for you. If we don't have the blessings, it's because we haven't asked, sought or not. Realize that it is His good pleasure, that's what the Bible tells us, it is the good pleasure of God to give unto His children good gifts. He's a good, good Father. I want to tell you this this morning, I'm going to let you go. You already know these things. I know you know. <laughs> he knows you know. Do you know that you know? He's a good, good father. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. In the Old Testament, he says, can a, can a mother forget her suckling child? He said, yea, some may. But I will never forget you. So a mom with her child on her breast might would be able to be calloused enough to set that child aside and forget about and go on. But not God. God said, I will never, ever forget you. I'll never forsake you and I'll never leave you. Why? He's a good father. We've lived in this life, and some of us have experienced good fathers. Some of you may have experienced not such a good experience with your dad or your father. Some of you may have never known your dad. You might have been like my dad. You might have never known him. Or you may have lost him early like my wife did when she was just a te young teenager. Uh, you didn't have the opportunity to experience all that you would have liked to have had. And on this earth... As we celebrate Father's Day today, you may be thinking about your earthly father. And, and that's right, we should do that. But I don't want you to forget about your heavenly father. I want you to remember that in place and in addition to all that you've ever known about earthly fathers, there is a heavenly father that what this verse says in verse number 11 goes much more, goes far beyond all that you can ever imagine that a good father would be to his children. Verse 11 says that how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good gifts or good things to them that ask him. That's just a blessing right there. I want you to focus on that today because it doesn't matter how old you are. You need a father. It doesn't matter how old, I mean, I'm 60 years old now. My dad's more important to me today probably than he was when I was six. I keep thinking about all the things that he instilled in my life. I, I told somebody the other day, the older I get, the smarter he gets. The things that he taught, I remember more and more. The things that he said, he was always planting things in my heart and in my life. And I, I'm grateful for that. But my heavenly Father has much more than even my dad on this earth had to share with me. And what I wanted to do today was quite simply, and I'm going to let you go, I just wanted to point you to the Father. I want to remind you, He wants a relationship with you. When was the last time you prayed? When was the last time that you prayed often? When was the last time you prayed with urgency or passion? When was the last time you spent time with God in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we bow before you today, we were just talking about prayer. Lord, I just want to include the, uh, a directive to you as we uh, carry on this conversation by closing this in a, in a prayer. Lord, that, uh, I, I apologize. I'm so sorry for the many times that I haven't taken the opportunity to call home when I should call home. So many times that I haven't uh, taken the initiative to, to, to come and see you when I should come and see you. Lord, I, I, I want to ask your forgiveness, Lord, for my self-centered uh, ways. And Lord, as I have tried to communicate to my brothers and sisters today, I pray God will all remember that God's a, 
You're a good God. You're a good Father. Your desire is, is just waiting to bless us. In fact, we're told that there's a storehouse. Wait a minute. I thought my dad had, and then he showed me his empire. But Lord, you said there's a storehouse that is just filled, waiting to bless your children. Lord, if we would just ask, you're waiting to pour those blessings out. You actually told us that if, if we would do your will and, and respond to you, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there wouldn't be room enough to contain them. I believe that. So today, God, I just want to, I want to, with my brothers and sisters, be reminded, our good Father is always watching over us. He's always doing what is right and good, and he's got a storehouse of blessings waiting for us to commune with him so that we might receive. May we honor you this Father's Day. May we lift you up and glorify you above everything. I want to thank you for all of our fathers in attendance and watching today. But God, thank you for being our good, good Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day today as you celebrate Father's Day. We'll see you back tonight at 6 p.m. Lord willing. Well, Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our worship service. It is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904-924-8240, or you can email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, at L-R-B-C, J-A-X dot org. Until next time, may God be richly blessing you.